let's talk altered perception. When I was in Walmart, this caught my eye. No pun intended. It had decent looking cover art, so I said, sure, let's give it a try. So where do I begin? We have a bunch of random people in arguments and guns and pushing. All three couples we see in the beginning that are fighting were in a test study. All had weapons in their house and also they all are doing a drug case study. A round table of people who we later find out who are doctors and lawyers talking about the drug and how it alters their sensory experience. One of the ladies says, Isn't that the same as LSD? The doctor gets super mad. No! Ours was not synthesized through a fungus. The drug's purpose is to try to stop people from being hostile, and it ends up making them even more hostile. We get some patient confessions, kind of like the real world show, before everything went downhill. This is what they wanted from the outcome of the experiment. So Andrew is trying to explain to Lori about jail time for one of his cases and why his client didn't take the deal. She asks him what that meant and brings up her own case. You mean like my solicitation charge? He answers, she then freaks out and says, Okay, well, that's not gonna happen again. So why'd you have to bring it up? I was just answering your question. Why'd you have to use my case as an example? When he didn't, he's just answering her. She is seriously crazy and stupid and just trying to argue. And then they start fighting. Then we get introduced to Emily and Beth. Emily thinks Beth wants a guy, but Beth just thinks they're attractive. Something happened between Beth and Emily's brother, but we don't know yet. It hurts that she doesn't fully believe me. I mean, I know it's her brother, but... I know him. I, I just can't picture him doing something like that, ever. I just want Emily to believe me. Then we get introduced to Steve and Christina. Christina thinks he wants to leave, which is making Steve want to leave. She doesn't trust him because he's out all the time, but he's in the film industry, so he's always busy. Everyone is all in the waiting room signing the paperwork, and they're talking about what it's supposed to do and this drug getting shot into their eyeball. You know, I actually heard that they're supposed to inject you in the eye. What? No, that's not true. No, I heard that. What does that mean? Oh, that means that she's gonna stick that straight to your brain, man. He is like, hold the fuck up. You are not putting that in my eye. This bald dude is trying really hard to freak out Andrew. Well, unless, you know, she misses the worst headache ever, man. <laughs> they make it seem like Christina is hiding something. Lori suggests to watch porn after they awkwardly try to find porn to watch because Andrew is just saying no to most of the options. Then they have sex, which... Is like 30 seconds of this weird sex scene. She makes a joke about her old life, about being a hooker after sex, and he doesn't like it. Don't worry. I'm giving you a discount tonight. I was joking. I know, okay, but it's, it's not funny. We finally learn the name of the drugs that they got injected with. I think I feel the effects of the DPT. When they go to Beth and Emily, they start talking about the drug and what if it's like true serum. And then Beth says, I wish there was such a thing as a true serum. And you know I was telling the truth. Emily gets mad and says, I told you, Beth, I believe you. If I didn't believe you, I wouldn't still be with you after you cheated on me with my- Beth says he raped her, but the brother just says he had sex with her. Then they talk about the situation. Beth says- When you've a version mine are his, he still had sex with your fiance. In my version, he's a rapist. In his version, he's just a scumbag. Either way, I think you'd stop talking to him. But Emily is having a hard time believing her. We then go back to Steve and Christina. Christina thinks he's cheating on her. Steve tells Christina about a situation he was- in with a girl named Reese, where he was alone and had to borrow a phone, and she asked him if he wanted wine, and he said no. She said, Well, did you fuck her? Oh my god. We get back to Emily and Beth, and they have a chat about when they knew they were lesbians, and how each of them had a different experience. Some good dialogue back and forth. But can we just talk about how they had the unripest banana on the table? Like, oh my gosh. Andrew is questioning the drug they were given and talks about the bad fight they have. I'm starting to have some concerns about this drug that you gave us. It, um, Look, Lori and I have had our fair share of fights. Some of them really heated, but this last one. Lori is throwing plates and food at him. Andrew gets physical with her, telling her to stop, and pins her against the wall, choking her. Dr. Guy says, It was at this point that we had considered stopping the study. <laughs> Are you serious? Somehow they thought assault was a breakthrough, so they just kept going. We come back to Steve and Christina chatting. She starts blaming herself about what is going on at his job, making him stay home. He says his job offered him more money to stay in a bungalow for three weeks so he can focus on work. She seems okay with it, but then they go to sleep and her eyes are still open. Super creepy. Beth gets really mad when Emily talks about her brother. Again, they bring up the rape or not with her brother and they have another fight. Beth is mad at Emily for not believing her, but it's hard to when she doesn't give her much about it other than just saying believe 
believe her. Believe it. Christina is looking over at Steve from the bed, which is super creepy, and asks him, is he lying to her? And just wants to stay in the bungalow so he can sleep with Reese. She then brings it up again that he was at her house and she won't believe him that he didn't cheat. She freaks out and he has to pin her to the bed and then she bites him. Back to Emily talking to her brother, asking about what happened. Beth comes home and starts yelling at each other. They both leave after Emily tells them to get out. Steve comes back to Christina and wants to talk to her. He says he wants to be more honest with her. He tells her she should trust him. They talk about some past stuff and she slowly realizes she shouldn't worry so much. This doctor guy talks so loud. Like every time he opens his mouth, it's like bigger than life overacting. It's just so bad. No, ours was not synthesized through a fungus. These conference scenes are always shot so weird. It's like they didn't have enough room or they just don't know how to film in a scene like this. Back with Andrew and Lori again. I don't know why they're together. Like they're two completely different people. Again, they bring up him being so smart and his lawyer talk is annoying to her. Those word games, I mean, even, even any way I answer it, I feel stupid. By no means am I trying to make you feel stupid. I, I argue the law. And he brings up her past again. Andrew says he doesn't like that they could have called her a whore and he hates the word. I don't know what they did to you. I don't know what they said to you. They called you a whore? And that fucking word so ingrained in our language that is, it, it's, it's implying that you're less of a person. She yet again thinks he's saying she is less than a person because she's stupid, says, Do you think I'm less of a person, Andrew? And pulls out a fucking gun. She says she used it when guys got crazy. Oh yeah, I had my nights where I had to put some people in their place, get him in his most vulnerable position, stick it in his mouth. Do you wanna put the gun away, please, Lori? Emily says she thinks the meds are working and she knows what she needs to do. She calls Beth to come over and we see a gun on the nightstand and says, I need you to come home. This isn't gonna be easy for me. Like, girl, what are you thinking? Back with Steve and Christina, she's telling him that she thinks the meds are working and how she's been really silly for not trusting him. Why are there so many close-ups? Like, oh my gosh. She says she called Brandy, the assistant girl, and, and says she's sorry about getting HR involved. Apparently, Brandy has no idea what they're talking about. So she's slowly catching him in a lie, saying she called the Mary Eye and how she pretended she lost her earrings so she could see what room he was in. And apparently he booked a room for two under his name. Steve's trying to dig himself out of the hole, but she's just not buying it. That tongue roll though. Put her on speaker. She wants Steve to call the girl so Christina can see that she's right. Back with Andrew and Lori, Andrew is saying he's sorry. They both apologize to each other. And Lori says, you are right. I brought up my charges. And he says, no, I did. I said it. She's like, no, I remember her now. I said it. They really like to go back and forth with this. The end was seeming like they're in a good place, though. Beth comes over, and Emily says they need to talk. She then invites her brother over. Then she takes a gun out and points it at him. She then starts bursting into tears and wants him to admit he did something to her when they were younger. He then admits he molested her when she was younger. I went into your bed. And? We were just kids. You molested me and told me that if our parents ever found out that they would hate me for being a slut. Then he admits to raping Beth, like it's no big deal. Fucked your girlfriend, so what? Even though she said no. Big fucking deal. And then he just leaves. We find out from the people in the conference room he was later arrested for convicting himself. Cause you know, they're being videotaped. Back with Steve and Christina. After Steve takes a few more sips of the wine, he starts to feel a little drowsy. And that's when we find out Christina drugged him with some muscle relaxer. Steve is saying, stop being crazy. What did you do to me? Then she pulls a knife out on him. Then Christina gets really crazy, gets on top of him with the knife and stabs him to death. Some nice CGI blood. She then lets her jealousy consume her, even though she was pretty much right about him cheating. But still took it way too far with killing him. She slaps the camera down after she realizes what she'd done. This movie was very short, only about an hour and 13 minutes long. Following three couples in their life's problems, the drug really didn't play much of a role in this movie, but it really doesn't seem any different from any other normal drama people go through in life. They didn't show the side effects or anything. You might say, well, Christina got super crazy and killed him. Her jealousy got the best of her. It wasn't the drugs that made her do it. Everyone else's relationship seemed really unfazed by the drugs. That's the thing I didn't like about this movie is they kept on talking about the DPT, but it just didn't seem like anyone was actually on any drugs. They said it altered their state of mind and made them think clearer, but I couldn't tell. It just seemed like your typical couple drama to me. The acting parts were passable. Some scenes were pretty good. 
some really odd camera angles, though, like in the conference room or just other random shots. Everyone in that conference room was not good at acting and very boring. Steve, Andrew, and Beth all did pretty good. Emily and Christina were passable, and Lori, I think, did the worst out of everybody. Her character was just super annoying, very stupid, and crazy. I thought she was going to be the one that killed Andrew. Also, I just looked at the movie now, and I just noticed that the actress who plays Lori also wrote this movie, so that explains a lot about this film. The whole beginning was badly edited, and I don't think that it needed to be shown. If they cut that out, I think it would have been a lot better. I felt like I was just watching them go through some weird couples therapy, but without the therapist. And it's weird that they were being filmed in in their house but most of them forgot it was even there which I thought was odd because they do a lot of stuff you don't think they would do if they were being filmed. The movie was pretty boring, some of the acting was passable, some bad, super short, and just didn't go anywhere. The death at the end was silly, and the whole drug thing could have been handled way better. Not a horrible movie, just not entertaining one at all. This is definitely going in the trash bin. This is why Alter Perception gets a 4 out of 10. If you guys like this Trash or Treasure review, hit that thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.